Welcome to the Research Like a Pro with DNA question and answer series. I'm Nicole Dyer, and today our question is about sorting 23andMe matches, whether you should do it by percent or strength of relationship. So the full question is, how does 23andMe determine strength of relationship? Is this a more valuable sorting mechanism to use for producing a leads chart, or would percentage of shared DNA work better, or both? I noticed some individuals with whom I shared up to 100 to 150 centimorgans were ranked low when sorted by strength of relationship. So this uh, question came from a Research Like a Pro with DNA Study Group member, and so we're going to look at some of the help articles at 23andMe to see if we can answer what strength of relationship means and determine um, which is the best way to sort when trying to find your second and third cousins to do the leads method. So if you'll notice at the top of your um, DNA relatives list at 23andMe, there is a sort by drop-down box. And the four options there are strength of relationship, which sorts by the predicted relationship, percent related, which sorts by the percent of shared DNA, segments shared, which sorts by the number of segments shared, and newest relatives, which sorts by the relatives who recently opted in to DNA relatives. So I think the default is strength of relationship, but you can switch it over to percent related or the other options if you want to. So which one would be the best and which one should you use? Well, first we need to understand how the strength of relationship is determined. So in the customer care article at 23andMe called Relationship Ranges and the Predicted Relationship, it says, in general, for the same percent DNA shared, longer segments give a closer predicted relationship than a greater number of shorter segments. The estimate is based off a number of assumptions about population growth and characteristics of specific populations. So 23andMe is um, doing a lot of science in the background. Uh, they have uh, a scientific article that you can read that they link to on one of their customer care pages that talks all about how they determine uh, the predicted relationships. And so this strength of relationship sorting option is just putting everything in order by relationship that they have predicted based on the percent of DNA shared and um, longer segments because they have said that longer segments give a closer predicted relationship than a greater number of shorter segments. So if they predict that somebody's a first cousin, they'll put all the first cousins first, and then if they predict that they're a second cousin, they'll list those next, and then the third cousins and fourth cousins and so forth. So that's how it would be ordered if you sort and order it by the strength of relationship. One thing I noticed is when I sorted by percent of DNA shared, all of a sudden the relationships were kind of mixed up. So sometimes there would be like a third cousin and then a fourth cousin and then a third cousin and then a fourth cousin because they're looking at those segment lengths to determine if somebody's closer. So the strength of relationship, like we learned, it looks at both percent and the length of DNA segments. And so if there are a lot of small segments shared between you and another individual, that's not as close of a relationship. And this is because a lot of people who have endogamy and pedigree collapse will share many very small segments with a lot of other people from the same endogamous, endogamous population. And this doesn't indicate that they have recent um, common shared ancestors, but that they are from a, a similar population, from the same population, and all of the people within that population all share a lot of small segments because they've been intermarrying for several hundred years. So the percent of DNA and strength of relationship sorting for people who don't come from endogamous populations will have a very similar order of the matches. Um, I didn't notice a very big change when I was looking at my mom's kit at 23andMe. There were just a couple people whose positions changed a little bit on the first and second pages of the matches. When I got down to third and fourth cousins, then there was more intermixing between third and fourth cousins. You know, it wasn't in perfect order, you know, from third cousins to fourth cousins anymore. It was mixed up when I sorted by percent. 23andMe also does include matches on the X chromosome in the total amount of shared DNA and in the percentage. So this is another thing that I noticed when I was looking at my mom's match list is that um, whenever there was a single shared segment on the X chromosome, 
it was given a lower strength of relationship rating. So um, if, you know, there was somebody right next to that person who shared the same percent of DNA, um, the, X, the single segment match on the X chromosome was predicted as a fourth cousin, whereas somebody who shared equal amount of percent of DNA on the autosomal chromosomes, they um, were given a third cousin relationship rating. So uh, they're taking into account uh, several different factors, I think, when they decide the strength of relationship. They're not just basing it totally off the total percent. They're looking at um, segments, segment size, X chromosome segments, and so forth. Now, how does this apply to selecting matches for the leads method? So if you're using the 23andMe match list to do the leads method and to sort your close matches into four grandparent groups or um, colored clusters, then typically this is done with matches in the second to third cousin range. And at Ancestry, Dana Leeds suggests um, choosing matches sharing 90 to 400 centimorgans. And in the 23andMe match list, you don't see the number of centimorgans on the match list page, the DNA relatives page. Instead, you see the percent of shared DNA, or you can um, also just focus on the strength of relationship, which is also shown on the match list page. So if you want to, you could take, you know, the 90 to 400 centimorgans and convert that into percent, which would be about 1.21% of shared DNA, which is about 90 centimorgans, and 400 would be about 5.38% of shared DNA. So this is just a conversion done at the Shared Centimorgan Project tool. And so you could go from 1.21% to 5.38% and list everybody in your leads method spreadsheet that fall within those percentage. Um, but if you do have any pedigree collapse, um, then you might want to focus on strength of relationship. Or if you're having a lot of X matches that are actually more distant than, you know, third cousin, you might want to focus on just that second to third cousin predicted relationship and um, just gather all those second and third cousins. Now in 23andMe you'll have a lot of predicted third cousins so that might be too many for your leads method so maybe something in between you know go down to one one percent or um, just include some of your third cousins depending on how much time you have. When I did this I went down to about 1.15% of shared DNA and it was great. Uh, you can see my example here on the screen. I was able to figure out who the clusters were mostly by um, people I'd identified in the past and some new people who I messaged and they sent me messages back and I was able to figure out, you know, the blue one was the career Peterson side of my mom's family and um, then there was the Schultz Royston side was orange and I sent some messages and found out that this purple group was the Harris Welch side. Our takeaways for this question and answer video are that sorting 23andMe matches by strength of relationship is very helpful for match lists where endogamy and pedigree collapse is making distant matches seem closer. But for everyone else, the matches that are included in a leads method analysis will be very similar, whether you sort the match list by percentage of shared DNA or strength of relationship. So it's up to you, and you can really include as many matches in your leads method analysis as you feel like working on but uh, you don't need to go all the way down to the bottom of your match list to, to do your leads method. Um, about 1.2% of shared DNA is a good place to go to or third cousins.